welcome to the zeitgeist. The zeitgeist. This is a word that people don't really understand. It represents the spirit of the age, a spirit of the time, a general vibe that influences the era in which we live. The zeitgeist is all around us. We are here in the marker zeitgeist. Step outside, we're in the cultural zeitgeist. It's all around us, it's very important, I think, if you're owning a brand, to be in touch with the zeitgeist. And the zeitgeist affects all of us, and it affects everybody of every age. And I would say that I'm very fortunate in my life to be in touch with many people of different ages, and I think it's really important. My little niece is four. My youngest sister is 10 years younger than me. My grandmother is 94, and she lives 10 doors away from me in London, and she is my best friend, and we chat about everything. And she's completely in touch with culture. She likes to ring the local radio show. She's Anne of Kensington. She likes to have a chat with the DJ about whatever's going on. And she, to me, is as important as my four-year-old niece who's talking about Frozen costumes and Disney films. And everybody in between that, I try and... I'm, I don't try, I mean, I want to talk to them, but if there's anything I can say is that the zeitgeist affects all of us. And if we want to attract customers to a brand, if we want to attract people, ourselves, it's important to reach out to everybody of every generation because they're all relevant, they all matter. As much as the youngsters coming through matter, so does that 94-year-old who has money, she has time, he, she has time to go on these holidays. Actually, I have to say, Granny, much as Granny would love to go on holidays like we've just seen, I don't think she's gonna make it, but anyway. Um, so how do you keep cool so your brand remains hot? I'm gonna give you a super quick download on some of the things that I find helpful. So there's a the statement that I'd just like to share with you all, and it's good to have this in your mindset. I talk about your brand because it benefits me, not you. So if you're reaching out to customers, or if I'm reaching out to you, I'm, I'm gonna Instagram, tweet, talk, shop, tell my friends about your brand, because it makes me look cool. I don't care about you. What, how do you get me to talk about your brand? You make it cool by association. If you can create a world to which I want to belong, then I want to go and share that to my friends because it makes me look cool. So if we can get into that mindset, it's a very helpful one. Another thing I'd like to uh, suggest, a new idea, that the building of brands is old news. The new behavior for the next few decades is about creating a movement. It's a bigger idea and it doesn't apply to everybody, but it's a mindset that's out there in the zeitgeist. And I think it's important to think about that. If you look at some of the key brands that are out there now that we're all involved with, that we all not live and breathe, but we're all aware of. Think of something like Apple, Google, Burberry, Chanel, some of the big, big brands in the world. Those brands right now are creating a movement. They're not building a brand, they have built a brand. They're now about creating a movement, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that in a minute, about how they're doing that. So what do you and your fans want? And when I say that, I think it's important for us to remember what you want is also what your consumers want. And I like to call consumers fans because I think that, that people want to belong. We create a world to which people want to belong. I'm proud to be a fan of Burberry. I may not be a consumer of Burberry, but I can engage myself with the movement that they've created. I can create, uh, engage with the, the thing that they're, they're building. Even if I buy one bottle of fragrance from that brand, I still am proud to consider myself a fan of the brand, even if I'm not a key consumer. So how do you, well, what do you and your fans and customers want? How do you give it to them? First of all, I'll, we, the first way is befriend the flat platforms of cool. Now we're all aware of social media and we all know that there's a gazillion platforms out there. Which one you like, which one you use, which one you use to engage with your customers, your fans, your friends, it's up to you. There is no right or wrong. I get asked by companies all the time, oh, but should we do Facebook? Should we do Tumblr? Should we do Reddit? Should we do Pinterest? Should we do Instagram? It's up to you. 
what you like is probably what your customers will like too. Don't underestimate the power of you. For me, I don't care about Facebook. I think it's ugly, I don't like the design, I think it's dull, it's, it's messy, I don't like it. I love Instagram. And I was going to say that I've actually asked a very nice lady in the audience, to, to, I've given her my phone to take photos of me so that I can immediately go and put one on Instagram later. I'm proud to be here and I want to share that with my friends. And I want to share that immediately. I don't want to wait four or five days. So for me, it's that same thing. I use this to show that I'm cool. I really want to show people I'm part of this today. I'm proud to be a part of Marka. I'll be Instagramming pictures of Istanbul as much as I can because I'm really, really proud to be here. So befriend the platforms of cool, but what I will say is don't befriend all of them. If you befriend them, then don't replicate the same thing on each. Whichever you choose, try and create different but similar content on the different platforms. When I see a website for a fashion brand, a store, a restaurant, and they have 19 social media buttons down the side, I find it irritating and exhausting and annoying, and I'm not gonna go to all of them. So I would suggest three or four for your brand and use them. In the olden days, the only way for you to communicate with an audience about your brand was probably through the press or through a physical shop with a shop window. Now we have this virtual world. We can connect to a global audience in a matter of milliseconds. So don't be afraid to go and do that, um, but keep it really, really relevant to your brand. Also, if you think that there's still five billion people to come online, there's a huge amount of people. That's a huge audience available to you. If you can get your message clear and really use these platforms, you're gonna reach an audience that you could never have imagined before. And the people who are gonna come online, those five billion, they're not gonna come online, they're not gonna come online or communication by, via a landline, nor are they gonna use a laptop. They're all gonna come online via a smartphone. So think about that in the way that you design your social media and the way that you use your social media. It's got to be smartphone friendly. And you're gonna be reaching people that may have never even had electricity before. And they're suddenly gonna be bombarded with products, whether you're selling a car, you're in tech, you're a hotel. You can reach all these people, but remember that they're very new to this. So sometimes I think it really pays to keep it simple. Start the conversation and keep talking. Don't throw something out there and then, and then stop it. People want a conversation now. Social media is all about the global conversation. You have to keep talking. However, don't repeat yourself. Be consistent and be persistent. I think it's really important. And be inclusive but remain exclusive. Some of the best brands in the world have really nailed this. You don't want to uh, flood the market and flood your customers with endless images, endless everything. You want to keep it really exclusive, but you also want to be inclusive and, and keep in mind a global audience. The other thing I will say about social media is no one's paying us to do it. No one's paying us to do it. It's this huge new job that's all been loaded upon us. It's a bit like going to the gym. I go to the gym to keep fit. I do my social media to keep my brand fit. No one's paying me to do it, but it helps me look good. It helps my brand look good. And whatever you're doing, whatever your job is, use social media to keep in touch with the zeitgeist. It's a bit like picking up a newspaper, a magazine, and a coffee table book all in one within the first four minutes that you wake up. And for me, it keeps me, I follow CNN, I follow Time Magazine, I follow Vogue, I follow my best friend, I follow some random style icon in Russia who I have no idea who she is, but I like what she's wearing. I keep in touch with all of this and it's instant. And I can't, can't stress the value of, of following all these people because they've got so much to say. Reinvent. It's very important for us in this ever-changing fast world to keep reinventing and don't relent. It's very, very important now, I think, people get really bored really quickly. So it's important to give them something fresh and new all the time while still being true to your core brand message. And the last thing on this note is to look up. We are also busy looking down at the phones. It is also important to look up. If 
you're lucky enough to be in a rooftop dining restaurant in one of those lovely hotels, then it's easier to look up. But while we're walking down the street, remember to look away from the phone, away from the technology, to the real people as well. They hold as much value as those images online and those words online. Human behavior tells us everything. If we study humans, if we study what's going on out there, if we study what's going on out in the street, we are absolutely plugged into the zeitgeist in a second. It's just about looking up. So we must look up as much as we look down. I'd love some water. Can I just steal your water quickly? Thank you. Okay. So this is a quick download for fun. Favorite websites for coolspiration. These are some websites that I, I read and look at every day. So this is the first one that I wanted to talk about. I'll just put that there. Daily Candy. I ran this. This is just an example of how someone lost sight of their core brand message. Daily Candy went to about 4 million people at its peak. It was the first uh, daily email publication. It was created, sadly not by me, by a brilliant woman called Danny Levy, who worked on a magazine, wanted to tell all her friends about a new restaurant that was opening that day, and couldn't believe that she had to wait three months for the magazine, print magazine lead time to tell everyone about it. Email had just begun. This was in New York. So she sent an email to everybody saying, this restaurant opened, it's cool. And it grew from there, and it became a daily email phenomenon. It went to cities all over America. I was employed to run it. I wrote a play. My play ended up in New York. This thing called Daily Candy wrote about my play, and it was sold out for three weeks because of Daily Candy. It was incredibly powerful. They came and asked me would I like to launch it internationally in the UK, which I did. And I'm very, very proud of it. However, it was then bought by Comcast for $125 million, which is a huge, huge deal for an email publication. Comcast lost sight of its core brand message, of its core brand aim, did all sorts of different things, went willy-nilly, and the whole thing was shut down last year. And I have to say that people were grieving because it was like a best friend whispering in your ear the latest, coolest thing. And people, we, we, had, we had like a grieving page, a, a page of condolences from fans all around the world saying, this is so sad, what can we do? And it just, it's, it's one of those things, these things come and go, um, but it, it got, it, it lost sight of its, its, its true essence. And I think it's a good example of how important it is to remain consistent. Style.com, whether you're in fashion, not in fashion, Style.com is one of the only websites right now that shows all the fashion shows that happen from around the world. I know you have a big fashion week here in Istanbul. Um, it shows all the fashion weeks from around the world. Whatever work, uh, whatever work you're in, I think it's important to keep in touch with things like that, with what people are wearing, with what people are doing, with events, with parties. How are people doing parties? How are people doing events? Events, to me, can be so brilliant for a brand and so wrong for a brand. You have to get them right. They cost a fortune. Get them right. They, sites like this, for me, really, really inspire me because they just show what all the, everyone's doing. Um, business of fashion. This is uh, one of the most brilliant things uh, that's emerged in the last three or four years. It's set up by a brilliant man called Imran Ahmed. It's, it's a kind of Financial Times stroke Vogue. I get it every day. And it will tell you the inside business information that's happening in all the fashion and uh, culture luxury industry. I, I think anybody who's working in any kind of a luxury brand or giving any service to any consumer should really log on to the business of fashion. Oh, I've only got three minutes left. I'll be really quick. Uh, women's Wear Daily, always useful to have every day. My God, I've got so much more. The Cool Hunter, this is just cool stuff from around the world. Beautiful design, beautiful luxury, beautiful fashion hotels. Log on, get your weekly email. It's brilliant. Yatsa, another really cool, newsy, luxury zeitgeist guide. Get the Gloss, I contribute to this new site. It's a new beauty website. Um, GQ. Uh, always important to keep up with what the men are doing, uh, even if you're a woman. Dazed, this is part of Dazed and Confused magazine. Their website is brilliant. Again, they're not replicating content. It's very important if you're a magazine and you have a website and you tweet and you do uh, Instagram, don't replicate the same thing 10 times over. Build a base. If that's your print edition, fine. Stick to your print edition and then create new content aligned with the print edition in your website. Days does this brilliantly. Hunger, set up by photographer Rankin, absolutely brilliant. Lots of fashion films, really avant-garde. Netaporte, 
brilliant fashion website that sells lots of beautiful clothes, but has an incredible online publication called The Edit, which is uh, an example of how someone's getting print, uh, web print, web publications really right. They're spending money on it. It's as luxurious and glamorous as a print publication. Show Studio, this is set up by fa British fashion photographer Nick Knight. Absolutely beautiful, really inspiring things. In the olden days, you'd have to go to the cinema to see things like this. Now, it's there in your lunch hour. You have three minutes to spare, and these things can be such a source of inspiration. This is uh, Corinne Reutfeld, the ex-editor uh, of French Vogue, set up a uh, CR fashion book. I don't think her branding's that strong because that's her homepage, and you wouldn't have any idea what that was. Um, but it's important to just know about that. So I just want to quickly talk about YouTube channels. I've got so much more to say. YouTube channels, I think YouTube is the future. I think soon we're going to have YouTube 1, YouTube 2, YouTube 3, YouTube 4, sport, news, film, whatever, because it, there are so many things being uploaded every day. Film is the future. Much as I love print, I'm excited to make some films with Apple. Um, my talks on iTunes have been incredibly successful. Even if you watch them for one minute, like a TED talk, People are feeling as part of the new intelligentsia. People want to feel that they're doing something intelligent with their time. I think everyone's bored of reality TV. So YouTube, again, net supporter YouTube, always worth looking at. Um, this, I can't remember what this was. So, oh yes, films of fashion, it's up there. Films of fashion, again, there's a lot of, uh, if you're a brand, m save your money on huge commercials, print magazines, sometimes I would say. Go and make a beautiful film instead. It will go viral. People will love it. They will think very, very well of you. And Mario Testino, wonderful photographer. His YouTube channel is awesome. Have a look. It's how a YouTube channel should be done. And in my view, every photographer, every magazine, um, every fashion brand will soon have its own YouTube channel with totally new content that is created um, in order to do that thing of creating a movement. Uh, makers, this is part of AOL. I've also been doing some stuff with AOL in America. They have a brilliant site called Makers where they have small, short talks with thought changers, game changers, thought leaders from around the world. Um, it's absolutely brilliant and very inspiring. And this is a new website that I've just set up which takes the basis of daily candy, telling you something cool every day. And in addition, we uh, give everyone, a d we get a deal, a long-term deal on that cool stuff. So it marries the concept of daily candy with something like Groupon, which is obviously taken the world by storm. And um, I've just set this up with a business partner. I can't believe how the brands have joined on board. Everybody wants to be giving something back. Um, and this is going to have to be so quick because I've got 18 seconds left. What's cool, the super salon, hair salon, stroke barber, stroke cafe, stroke tech hub. This is the future. There's everybody wants more. The juice revolution, I know you have it happening here. It's huge. Juice is everywhere. In America, in England, it's medicinal, it's healthy, it's authentic, it's organic, it's great for the environment. The multifaceted restaurant. This is the future as well. Restaurants now are no longer just restaurants. They are cafes, they're juice bars, they're tech hubs, they're places of work, they're places to lounge, they're, they're meeting places. The multifaceted restaurant is something that's really, really emerging. Wearable tech, this is a studio called Studio XO. Um, we should all be aware of the Apple Watch, the iWatch, everything that's coming out. But in, in addition to that, designers and uh, tech are really, really marrying more than ever before. And we're gonna see some very, very exciting things on that front. Which leads me onto the Burning Man Festival, something you should all see. It's a place of innovation, ideas, small festival in Nevada that's become making a really big waves in, the, in all the industry. It calls itself a community of believers and dreamers. And it's a place where I think wearable tech is really emerging. All the Google guys go. Everybody hangs out there. But it's a place of real inspiration. Have a look at some of the photos online if you can't even get to it. It's where a lot of things are happening. A lot of ideas are coming out of Burning Man. The rise of couture. We're all fed up with high street, mainstream, mass-produced, uh, unethical fashion. The rise of couture is, is really out there, not only in fashion, but in cooking, in, in everything, in hair. It's all about a bespoke experience for your customers, creating something special and unique for them. The super brand, Mini Mall, Chanel just bought five shops within one arcade in London. And in that, they're going to have five Chanel shops. So it's not one big store. 
everybody's going back to this kind of small local boutique idea, but in one thing, and I can see that all the other brands are going to follow suit. I could say so much more, but I've got no time left. The re and this is my last one, Youth Revolution and the New Feminism. This is Pussy Riot supporting Occupy Hong Kong. There's a massive new movement out there with the youth. They have the power to speak now through social media. They are using social media to speak and express their opinions. And young women, we have something like Uber happening in, in Saudi Arabia, where women are now able to go in a car on their own. All sorts of things from the internet are changing and empowering women. Women now have a much stronger voice. They're much stronger in the workplace. They're much bigger earners, and they should not be underestimated. They are the consumer of, they are a very valid consumer. And we have to reach out to them as much as we reach out to anybody because they really have a lot of power now. And that is the end of my talk. Thank you very, very, very much for listening. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Superb. Okay. You did a fantastic <laughs> job.